Hey, what's going on, guys? Hex Commander back in today's video, video. And as always, down in the title below, we talk, we're talking about today. So, Overlord Season 3, Episode 3. Man, it's just the days of the, three, of the threes. And no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kind of pulling that out of my ass just, just because of Season 3, Episode 3. But that's besides the point. So, copying into this video, Beta. That's the character, you know, honestly, I've been wanting to know probably the most. Out of all the characters in the show as of right now, because, you know, outside the ones that we've already kind of learned about, you know, like Seba, so on and so forth, because Beta was always the one that acted the, the oddest, the weirdest. And there's always these, like, subtle episodes where she got focus to where, you know, to where the other mates did not. I mean, was it like episode 13 of uh, season one? There's an ending episode of season two where she won that speech about. She's like, actually, humans don't really bother me. You know, whenever all the maids are going in about humans, she's like, nah, they don't really bug me at all, actually. I don't see them any different as, like, really essentially anything else. Like, they're just, they're just beings. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing more to that. You know, at that point, it's kind of like, I wonder what kind of character she really is, you know? And at this episode, I was like, I wonder if she'll, you know, grow an attachment to Enri or something, you know, just seeing her around the village, seeing how she goes to the village. But, um... Uh, you know, of course, I noticed that there's that weird smile she get on her face sometimes. She just seemed seem sly, you know. She seemed cunning per se. And to find out that she's a sadist at the end, and she wants to see this village burn, and she made this new girl chief intentionally because she wanted to add to the fire. She wanted to add to her enjoyment of it. She wanted to make. She wanted to see the faces of people whenever Henry took over. You know. During a time to where everything was about to go up in flames, no matter who was the chief, but it's going to look even worse for Enri because she's the chief when it happens, and she's a newly found chief, and everyone in the village has built her up and looks, I mean, at her to guide the troop, you know, guide the troops because, I mean, she's young, first off and foremost, so then as soon as shit goes wrong and hits the fan, you're like, look at this, like, 20-year-old woman that just effed everything. She wants to see that terror. She wants to see that, that anger, that sadness, that disappointment. And I was just kind of like, holy shit, she actually, like, I was like, this is Ainz's village. Like, he, they're under Ainz's protection. Why, you know, so put that in perspective. We know how everyone feels about Lord Ainz. Put this in perspective. A maid, a maid is going to have this village, you know, just going to sit idly by and watch this village go up in flames. And it's, it's supposed to be under Lord Ainz's Ainz protection, which means... Think about how much of a sadist she is. There's being a sadist. This is like just taking it to a whole new level because we know the love that's supposed to be for Ainz. You know what I mean? So it's kind of as if her sadism even surpasses her love for Ainz. And we know everyone in the Zarg absolutely adores Ainz. I mean, for God's sake. I mean, look at the past two seasons for evidence. So it's weird. It's just kind of like her sadism is going to allow her to say, yeah, I'm going to let this village go up in flames and not, you know, stop it, even though I could stop it, it rather than protecting this village that is Lord Ainz. Think about that. Her sadism surpasses it, basically. That's nuts. That That's nuts. You guys probably didn't think about it like that, but yeah, it's pretty... I, I, I mean, I, I mean, I kind of dumbfounded by it. I'm like, wow, because the show's just done so much to show that you know that's the way these people are supposed to be programmed so it makes you wonder who actually created a uh, beta per se i mean be beta is i don't know but i would say mm, best best looking girl in the series we'll go with that we'll go with that she she's number one she's my number one right now at least that i can think of so yeah so at the same time though we do got to wonder why that one girl you know took uh why she's kind of like yeah I, I want to know about your uh, problem with Carney Village now. And whenever she's just kind of like blowing her off all of a sudden. You know, at first she's just blowing her off. And then all of a sudden she wants to know everything about Carney Village. She wants to, she's like, tell me, tell me. I, I'm going to be in so much trouble if I don't get to the bottom of this. That's kind of like, huh? Well, I was like, why is she so enthusiastic about this now? I, I, I'm confused. Why is she all over this girl saying, let's go talk in a private room about it and drink? Like, what? I... Uh, what happened there? What's going on there? That's suspicious, unless, of course, you know, she did say it was on adamant, adamite level. Therefore, Lord, you know, Lord Momama in her eyes, eyes, I don't know why I'm even going by the other name, eyes <laughs> is going to be involved. So, you know, I can very well, you know, very easily see this blowing up in, like, uh, Beta's face, because eyes obviously is fucking badass. And um, on top of that, though, 
I don't know if the if, if uh, Beta will even know Ainz is actually whenever he's like Momanga. I don't know if she'll actually know his, uh, you know, his persona. I don't I don't know if she knows his persona. I know the Guardians do. We know that. But I, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Season two, she should know his persona. So I wonder what her face will be like if uh, he shows up and just puts the, extinguishes those flames. You know what I mean? Like. She already, her sadism already surpasses her love for Heinz, apparently. I mean, think about it. I mean, she wants, she's about to watch the village fucking perish and burn in flames, even though it's supposed to be under Heinz's protection, quote-unquote. I mean, for God's sake. So, I mean, think about that as well. But other than that, though, the item that Heinz gave uh, Henry is pretty funny. That she got caught with it, and he's just kind of, oh, shit, that's, that's the Henry chicks that I saved in the first, like, episode or two. <laughs> he's just like, uh, let me talk to you guys in the back real quick. I gotta get this girl out of here. She doesn't deserve this. This is my bad. So, other than, other, you know, other than that, though, we found out that there's undead. We find that out. They built a fort, so let's see how those undead stack up against Ainz later on in the series, I'm sure, obviously. Um, the little goblin dudes are supposed to be made as fodder, and they're supposed to be foot soldiers, which sucks to find that out from that little goblin kid. That is garbage. <laughs> that sucks. They're going to eat you. They're going to use you as rations and, and as foot soldiers, so you can weaken the defense. You're basically sacrificial lambs, and you're also food. <laughs> like, damn, that sucks. So, I wonder where this east-west thing is going with all these demons and monsters and snakes. Probably not that big. I mean, look at the little hamster dude we got. He was the we he's weak as shit compared to Ainz, especially like he may be the weakest character we've seen in the series. I don't freaking know. Henry may be able to take that motherfucker out. I don't know. I don't know. Excuse my language. But um other than that though, guys, be sure to leave a like, a comment, subscribe, follow me to Rex25. See you guys next time, man. Peace. Thanks for watching, guys.